Hello everyone! For today's lesson, I will be discussing to you plan and prepare for termination, connection of electrical wirings or electronic circuits. So we are now in quarter 4, week 1 to 2. We are now down in the last quarter of this school year. To start with, let's start with a prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Lord God, thank you so much for giving us another day to study and prepare for a good life in the future. Thank you for giving us the chance to continue learning amidst the pandemic, which caused a lot of changes in our lives. Bless our parents who work hard to support us. Bless our teachers who are doing their best to inspire and guide us, especially in these trying times. Bless our country and the people who continue fighting to stop the pandemic. Lord, fill us with your wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Give us good memories so that we might understand and remember what we are going to study now. These we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Good day again, everyone. So we're now about to start our lesson. It is better for a beginner like you to learn first how to use the different hand tools and equipment. Also, you should know where to use them before they can start to build or assemble simple circuit up to complicated ones. You should know how to use multi-tester and other sophisticated equipment such as regulated power supply, signal generator, and oscilloscope troubleshooting is impossible. So it is very much important for us to know what are the different tools, hand tools, and equipment that we're going to use. We should be familiarized with these pictures. How are we going to use this one? Or what are the purpose? Or when to use only those hand tools? So we have here the first one, the long nose pliers. Wherein the long nose pliers is used to hold a certain object or materials for us to stretch, bend, or lead of electronic components or connecting wire. The second one is what we call now the slide cutter pliers, wherein it is used for cutting or trimming or connecting wires or terminal leads in the circuit boards. The next one, we have plenty type or different kinds of this driver or screws. We have the flat screw, wherein that is why it is called as flat screw, the tip of this hand tool is flat already, wherein it is used to drive or fasten negative slotted screws. We also have what we call now the Phillips screws. What is the difference between the Phillips screw and the flat screw? Try to look at the tip of this illustration. So here is the Phillips screwdriver, wherein it is used to drive or fasten this time Positive slotted screws. Flat is intended for negative, while Phillips screw is intended for positive drivers. We also have what we call now the soldering pencil, wherein it is used to join two or more metal conductors with the support of soldering lead melted around it. Sometimes we commonly see this one if you're going to ask someone to repair your cell phones. Let's say, for example, you're having a problem already with the power button of your cell phone or you're having a problem already with the chips of your cell phone. So this hand tools is being used for us to what? To stick that particular object to a certain equipment or materials. Then we have the desoldering tool wherein it is used to unsolder unwanted parts of component in the circuit with the support of soldering pencil. So sometimes this is in connection with the soldering pencil. 
So they go together. Now, what are the different basic electronic equipment? We have the multi-volt power supply, wherein it is used to supply the desired direct current voltage in the circuit. If you could only see, or if you could only visit the computer laboratory, you can see that one. So, sometimes we used to call this one as transformer or a regulator. Then we have the multi-tester wherein it is used to measure resistance, voltage, and current. To check whether there is a power or there is a real electric that is currently flowing in that particular equipment. Then we have the portable electric handrail. It is used for boring holes in the plastic chases or metal chase. Then, we also have now what we call the soldering. Wherein soldering is used in joining of metals using a filler material of a lower melting point than that of the parent metals to be joined. The information will help you in learning basic soldering skills. Solders, wires to electrical connectors, splices, and terminal lugs. How are you going to use or what are the procedures that we need to follow? The following are the soldering process. One, heat both items by applying the soldering iron to the copper pad and the component lead. Two, continue heating and apply a millimeter or solder. Remove the iron and allow the solder joint to cool naturally. And last one, it only takes a second or two to make the perfect joint which should appear shiny. So a matter of two to three seconds only. What are the different types of good solder joint? We have smooth, shiny, clean, concave filling. So this is a good example of cold solder joint. So this one is a cold solder joint and this one is not soldered. So you can see, ito medyo nakalubog siya ito nakaanga so this is a good solder joint so this one this is a bad solder joint next soldering tools what are the different soldering tools we have the vise you have seen that already we're in if you're going to twist this one it will loosen up this portion then you can place a certain object and clip it then you can cut already that particular object so that is the purpose of the vise to tighten or to hold a certain object that you would like to cut so you just have to use this one you just have to loosen it up or tighten it up then you have the safety glasses to protect not this type of glasses to protect your eyes for those unwa unwanted materials or tiny particles that will flow or that will go with the flow of the air then penetrates your eyes. Then we have the solder sucker. So based on the word solder sucker, it sucks those objects or those fluid or liquid. Then we have the solder tools. This has been shown already in the first slide. Diagonal cutters, then nose pliers. So we have the solder wick, dump sponge, so simple as a sponge, then the soldering iron. What are the process that we need to perform in thinning? One, apply solder to iron tip so you have to dip a certain your soldering iron to that metal one roll tip on dump, dump sponge properly thinned soldering iron tip soldering iron care and maintenance so how are we going to prolong the lifespan of that particular tools or hand tools one a soldering iron must be coated with a thin coat of solder this will allow for the transfer of heat to the workpiece. This procedure is now called thinning. The second one of the tip must be kept coated with a shiny layer or solder. 
by occasional de-wiping and applying solder directly to the tip. So those are the different hand tools materials and those are the different steps on how are you going to process a soldering and a thinning process. So I hope you've learned a lot with our quarter, quarter four, week one to two lesson. Bye everyone and see you in our next discussion.